This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Everybody, welcome to Bois. Bois. Uh, this is a King of the Hill podcast. I am Mike, and I'm Rusty. Rusty, we are here for a That Ain't Right Friday. That ain't right, and it is Friday. It is Friday, uh, and what we want to discuss here is a little article from Movie Web uh, called "How the King of the Hill Revival Could Handle Deceased Cast Members." Yeah, there's been a lot of speculation about it now that. Uh, sorry, uh, there's been a lot of speculation now that yeah. Johnny Hardwick has passed. Yeah, and uh, so for me, uh, I'll go ahead and get my rundown of it. Uh, a lot of people want to go AI. People say AI route. Sure. I and then you got the retire the the voice actors, you know, the retire the voices characters or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, you know, it's it's really tough either direction you go because you're gonna piss somebody off no matter what you do. But if I was the executive in charge, you know, it would be really hard to continue on those characters because it's kind of like. Uh, I don't even want to compare it like this because people dying is a lot, lot more tragic than sure. this. But say it's like a Hall of Football Famer yeah. or a Football yeah. Hall of Famer mm-hmm. that, that gets into the Hall of Fame. They retire that number. That number never gets to be used again in football, you know, like yeah. for that whatever team or whatever it is, a lot of them, they retire the number. So it's in that kind of – in that same yeah. vein, retire the character in honor of the, the voice actor that passed. So we're looking – But it's hard to do. You know, it's hard to carry on a show right. without – Dale and Luann. So we've got honestly. Luann, Lucky, and Dale. Like Lucky to They've me is passed. not that important because uh, no, I think anybody. I don't even do know Lucky. that much about Lucky. I, I I mean I know that Tom Pe- Tom Petty is great. Yeah, sure. The voice actor was great. The 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 direction of Lucky was great. Right. It just like for me though as a King of the Hill fan, all my favorite King of the Hill episodes. I mean, he had kind of he's become not even around he, yet. He had kind of become part of the family at the end and those things. Yeah, but. I'm not so much worried about recasting his voice because I think there's a lot of people that could do that. Yeah. Um, and it may be he finally had his final slip and pee pee or whatever, and he you know knocked himself out or something. Who something, knows? yeah. But I so, think you got to write these people out though. I don't think you could keep them in. I don't think you could have uh, uh, a Luann or like uh, set like you know even keeping them alive yeah. and not existing. I think I don't know. I think you have to kind of write them off. Well, you know, there's a there's a couple of ways that they address this. Uh, they say option one, like you were saying, retire the characters. Yeah. Uh, they may choose to have these characters suffer a similar fate with the loss of the actors. Um, doesn't necessarily mean they die, but perhaps they could move away from Arlen. In yeah. fact, each of the characters is built in way that they could easily be written off. So what they're talking about is the time jump that happens to begin with. And it is very possible that Luann and Lucky may have moved away. Uh, their daughter, I guess, would be. Uh, this is a fifteen-year time jump. So, yeah, fifteen-year time so jump. So the daughter would be fifteen, sixteen years old, something like that, right? Uh, and uh, what was their daughter's name? What's the baby's name? Because uh, I know they wanted meatloaf or something like that, and I can't remember what they came up with. Oh, I can't remember either. Anyway, uh, what they're saying is the daughter would be a little older. Maybe they want to build a new life for themselves in a new town. They could have moved away or whatever, and that's. That's probably the easiest way to handle that. Yeah, you, know, you could still have the daughter around because that's that's a brand new character. That's basically. a completely brand you know? new character for sure. Now, it just mitigating the what? Where are the parents? Where the, are you know? The elephant in the room, though, is Dale. 
because uh, yeah. um, he's too crucial of a character. It, well, even Luann by crucial. herself is she's crucial too. Yeah. You have to have Luann. So to be able to recast both of them or write them both out, that's tough for the show's whole atmosphere because uh, the interactions between Luann and Hank are some of the funnier moments of the show. Some of the more you know top five moments of the show are. Uh, uh, or Luann and his interactions. Sure, sure. And then you've got the whole premise of the show is four friends. To me, King of the Hill is True. less about Hank and his family, but it's more about Hank and his buddies. To me, that's what it's about. Everybody's like, oh, it's about, you know, Hank and his family. Well, no, it's more about Hank and his relationship with everybody in the neighborhood and things like that. But to me, it's more about his, Hank's relationship with his buddies from high school. Sure. Because the very first c- scene of the show you get is those four guys yeah. standing in front of a pickup truck. Yeah. And that's what you get. And the last, s- the last scene of the show is four dudes standing, yeah. or what was yeah. meant to be the last show, yeah. is four guys standing in an alley reminiscing about their lives. So it's like, well, the, uh, how, well, how 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 do you go on without Dale? One way they say, you know, if you're going to retire the character, uh, that maybe he, uh, you know, the Rusty Shackleford thing has caught up with him. Maybe he's moved into witness protection or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. But I will say the nice thing, in talking to uh, his friend and then talking to and then hearing some of the reports that came out, uh, it did say that he recorded a limited number of episodes. I think it was so six is what they said. He's already done some. And I think that honestly, for us fans, it'll kind of give us a, a way to say goodbye. You know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's sad to have lost him uh, before they could, you know, do more. No but. I'm sure, you know, as tragic as it is, like you said, for the fan base to even get to see any type of revival and get to see what that might even look like. Uh, you know, that's what Johnny, I feel like, you know, you know, based on what his buddy and everything said, that mm-hmm. you know, that's what Johnny wanted, you know. That's what, yeah, he, I don't would, doubt that's what it. he would want. I don't doubt it. And and honestly, it at this time they could take what Dale has done and feed it into AI and probably train and probably it well generate, enough. Generate yeah. his voice and stuff yeah. like that. And I guess it would Which be... Which wouldn't necessarily be terrible. And, and for that, it would be... It would be a test. You would you would have to test that. Sure. So you would have to take that and you'd have to test it with the actual audience and mm-hmm. then see how well that would even work because... Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, the human ear, the human eye, we, I mean, we detect and we could we could tell you, as human beings, we can look and hear things sure. and our bodies tell them or tell us, oh, well, that's not human. It's not right. Yeah, there's so something actually not it, right if about we're it. if we're listening to it and it puts off and projects that type of if they don't edit it right or if it's not done in a, in a way that feels human, I don't think that it's going to work. One of the nice things is that it is animated. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you're wholesale replacing these characters. No. You know, you you just have to worry about voices. You could recast. And you, you could, could recast. recast. I don't know that I'm crazy about that, but... Uh, I haven't heard... Uh, I've heard a lot of... Uh, people imitating yeah. Dale Gribble. Sure. And uh, Johnny Hardwick's voice. But I've never... I'm still like... Every now and again, you'll get a good voice actor that can mimic a voice of, of, of somebody so good that... It probably could pass as the actual voice, but I haven't heard any yet for Dale Gribble or Luann. There are people that think they can do it, but there's nobody I've heard that is just spot on. Right. There's there's one that we haven't talked about, and that's Toby Huss. Uh, Toby Huss, yeah. He is not supposed to return. Yeah, and he's not. the problem yeah. with Toby Huss is he did Cotton, and he also did Con. Now, I understand the Con thing because of the cultural insensitivity, Yeah, but um, even still, though, you're still going to have to recast Even him or though something. that they were awarded a an award by a, uh, yeah. a, it doesn't a matter an Asian-American days. ethnic organization that said that that show treated uh, the Laotian culture and ethnicity with the yeah. utmost respect... Uh, King of the Hill did the the finest job in television, according to these people, uh, at uh, portraying an Asian American. So I don't I don't understand why it would be such a big deal. Because uh, are there how many uh, how many Laotian voice actors are there yeah, in the United know. States? I'm sure there uh-huh. are, but how many are there really sure. that are just dying for that position to be? I'm not I'm I'm not saying there aren't any, but he's he's not stealing jobs from anybody. No, and I, I you've got a lot of characters in there. You've got a lot of characters in there that were voiced by the same people too. So like uh, Joseph, 
you know, Joseph was Brittany Murphy for a while. Brittany Murphy for a and good then while, yeah. He hit puberty and they went with Breck and Meyer. Yeah, they switched with Breck and Meyer. And so, as far as I know, Breck and Meyer's alive and kicking. So I'm sure he'll probably be, uh, it, it, if they don't change his voice entirely. Yeah, that's true. Because it could end up being uh, John John Redcorn's voice actor doing his voice. Yeah, I guess he could. Uh, well, and that's, that's probably. Boss. That's probably a, a really good point because uh, Joseph will be, what, almost 30? Yeah, they'll be in you know? be like 28, I think, yeah. is what the age yeah. up would put them at. So I can see. I can see. Because they're like 12, 13 in the show. So they'll be like 28, yeah. 27. Yeah, I can see Joss doing that um, and probably doing a pretty good job because I don't know if Redcorn's still around, but maybe he is. Maybe he is. Uh, that guy's got a phenomenal voice, so whatever he does, I'm sure is going to Yeah, be no, he's yeah, he's got a great voice. He's actually a uh, funny guy, too. Yeah, he, he, uh, he's one of the ones that I tried to contact. Uh -huh. He's one of the ones I wanted to – they got fees and It's like, stuff. how much you got? <laughs> yeah, what you got? What's, but, in, what's in your pocket, son? Yeah. No matter what, I hope that um, they stay true to the characters, uh, just, just the spirit of the characters, you know, and – there, there are ways to write them out, and I, and again, we're going to say this for the millionth time. I think we trust uh, Greg Daniels and uh, Mike Judge to do the right thing here. I, I know how I close they are to, the to right those thing. characters. You know, they're extremely close to them. So close in the fact that, like, uh, you know, as everybody that listens to this know, and you and I know, uh, Greg Daniels wasn't even really originally a, a creator yeah. of the show, right? But he came in with characters like Luann and sure. Cotton. And it was, you know, that's what I'm saying. That's why I trust these guys with the show, show so oh, yeah. much yeah. is because I feel like when I watch their stuff, they create because, you know, they create the right. office parts right. and rec, sure. all the stuff that Greg Daniels has done sure. on his own and Paul, Paul Lieberman and stuff too. Everything they do seems like a passion project. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like they half ass with just lack of emotion and just try to throw something together to make a, you know, make a quick buck. Everything that they do feels like it's a true, wholehearted passion project where they're trying to create something. They're not worried about the back end. They're worried about making something that the audience will enjoy and love. And that's what I've appreciated about all. That's the reason why my top five shows are Greg Daniels uh, adjacent or affiliated or Mike Judge created shows. Sure, sure. No, I, I again, I trust them to do the right thing. I just... I wish this thing would get rolling. Uh, it's too bad about the actor strike and all that stuff yeah. because I think we would probably have a release date at this point if not. Well, that's what I'm about to do this week is I'm about to go through all the stuff that they've released recently yeah. and go through and watch all of the Greg Daniels, Bandera yeah. Entertainment stuff because they've got like three projects out right now, I think, that are they do. active to be watched, and I haven't seen any of them yet. So I think that's what I might spend uh, – the rest of the week doing watching for cool. my, my TV watching. So well, I, again, uh, it's all up in limbo. We uh, we really hope that they handle it the right way. Because yeah, no, this, for sure. This it's, show means an awful lot. It's got to be delicate. Yeah, it's got to yeah, be delicate. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be delicate for the fans now because now you got a lot. The navigating it is different yeah, now. You know, yeah. navigating Luann and Lucky is one thing, but now you have to navigate Luann, Lucky, and Dale Gribble on top of that. So. Well, Luann, Lucky, Dale Gribble. Con Joseph, Con I mean, Joseph. Well, a lot I, I feel like some of them are easier to mitigate, but Dale, Dale's too hard. I feel like that's too hard of a voice. Dale's to a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Even if uh, it, it's like saying Stephen Root, you know, I mean Stephen Root did so many voices in this thing. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, if you lost him, I don't know where you'd be. Yeah. But that does us for a That Ain't Right Friday. Uh, you want right. to tell them where they can find us? You can find us at bwaaakoth dot com, or you can find us on roguemedianetwork.com. That's and it. you can also find us at patreon.com slash B W A A A K O T H. Yeah, if you can help us uh help us out on the Patreon. It's it's just three bucks a month. Um and all it does is help us support uh the making of this show. Uh we'll we're happy to call you guys out and, and let you know that uh we appreciate you so much. Either way, even if you can't do it, we appreciate you listening and helping yeah, with sure. our numbers. Uh and we will be back on Monday with another episode. Women Tanya. Women Tanya indeed. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.